Okay, so Pi News episode 96, and for this one, we're starting off with Twister OS, and that's because we now have a theme called Plasma on Twister OS, which is this one. This is the dark theme. There is a light theme as well, so we just hit enter to switch to that, which also looks really nice. You can see it's very much like KDE Plasma to use, the way all the icons are and everything. There is no window snapping though, so if we drag it over, it just goes over to the side and we can't lock it into place, which you can with KDE Plasma. And that's because this is a theme not actually applying KDE Plasma. And uh, I've already covered, there's loads of other themes on this. Part of uh, what makes Twister OS so great is that you can just switch into any one of these retro inspired themes or Mac OS themes. And if we go to their page and the download section, we can see the changes that have been made. So this is version 3.0.5. And we go to version history, added Twister Plasma themes, updated user account creation app, updated the theme Twister app, and updated the onboarding app. The performance definitely seems better. So I had an issue with the web browser before, but now it seems to be nice and responsive. So if we go, BBC Sport, it loads up nice and quick and scrolls through. So yeah, performance wise, it seems fine now. And it's really nice to see Twister OS getting these updates. Something else that's had an update is Fido OS. So if we go to the web browser, community preview, Fido OS version 19.0, and it now works for Raspberry Pi 500, which it didn't before. Uh, because the Pi 500 has the D variant processor, just like this 16 gig model that I've got in here, a lot of operating systems didn't work and need to be changed. Uh, so you can see here, this is Fido S working on a Pi 500. And in fact, if I put this USB stick in this computer, we'll see if it boots on the 16 gig Raspberry Pi 5. So I've left the NVMe in there, but I've plugged in the USB stick. If I now switch on and press the space key, you can press and hold or you can tap. We'll get the boot menu. So we've got four for USB, so let's try that. It's starting up, and if you don't know about Fido OS, I've got loads of videos on it. It basically gives you Chrome OS, which is the full desktop Chrome browser, but it also gives you Android support and Linux support it's super user friendly, so if you've got someone who isn't very computer literate, it's probably the best one on Raspberry Pi for a beginner. If I go to settings and device maybe, additional details, diagnostics. Uh, here we go, so under diagnostics I've got 13 gig of 15.6 gig available. While I'm in Fido S, let's do the next bit. So if we go to my channel, what I usually do is go through what's happened since the last episode of Pi News on my channel. So that's this one, Pi News 95. So not really Raspberry Pi, but I did use my iPad as a display for my Raspberry Pi. Had a couple of really nice cases from Electra Cookie, and I especially like the one I just showed, uh, which is this one in this video with the door. Super cheap, but really, really nice and really easy to swap out the NVMe drive. BotSpot contacted me and has Windows 11 working in a virtual machine and really good performance as well. Super easy to install. We had a 10.1 inch touchscreen display specifically for Raspberry Pi 5, although it can do other devices, but the Pi 5 uses 5 volt, 5 amp. My cats are in every video now. Uh, we also had the CM5 board from Waveshare, a new one for the CM5, and the box from Waveshare with PoE, power over ethernet, which I really liked. Twister OS was back for the first time, and obviously we've had an update, which I talked about just now. I did connect this dual display to my Raspberry Pi. At 500, I could have a triple display if I wanted to, because if a device has two monitor outputs, this monitor works as one. So even though it's two displays, two 18 and a half inch displays, uh, you can add basically an extra monitor to your setup. Android 15 got Linux, uh, but unfortunately only the version without a graphical user interface. I had my first go at Terminal Browser, which was just brilliant. Really, really good performance on a Pi Zero 2W. So super cheap computer, but with a working web browser. Okay, I'm gonna switch back to my regular OS for Pi News KDE Plasma. So let's shut this down. 
Okay, so first up, Hackaday had this story, build customized Raspberry Pi OS images with RPI image gen. And there's a link to the GitHub here with all the information you can need. Now it does seem to be more for industry, so maybe companies would look to use something like this. It's not something I think I need. Although I did see on the official Raspberry Pi story, uh, there were some people talking about in the comments, yeah, currently working on a project using the 02W, which has only 512 meg of RAM. Hopefully I can get something back from the OS. And another one was working on a Pi 3A. So yeah, if you can strip it down for these really low powered devices, that could be a very good thing. And talking of low powered devices, Raspberry Pi Zero powered USB stick. This is AI, large language models. Now the amount of data is key to this. So I did an AI video on a Raspberry Pi 5 and it was usable, but it was very slow. So a 02W, as long as the language model is small enough, then I guess it's usable. Llama CPP and Llama file, a combination of an instruction set and a series of packages designed to offer a lightweight chatbot experience offline. And I'll link to this if you want more information. The RP2350 is now available at JLPCB. So basically you can submit your own designs and they'll print the board for you with this chip on it. Very impressive, beyond me but very impressive. And in this other story from Tom's Hardware, they mentioned that you can buy just the chips on their own and they are less than a dollar. So a bundle of 10 RP2350s for £8.80 or $9. Nice one from Tom's Hardware here. Raspberry Pi powers miniature Severance MDR computer. If you haven't watched Severance, it is brilliant. I haven't finished watching it yet, so no spoilers on the second series. But uh, yeah, if you know about the series, you'll know what this is. And this story from Raspberry Pi News, so the Compute Module 4 now has variants that can work up to minus 40 degrees and plus 85 degrees. That's really impressive. Not sure if they'll look much different. The Antarctic, ocean floor and low Earth orbit. I was listening to the Untitled Linux podcast the other day and they mentioned that GNOME 48 was going to support dynamic double triple buffering which will help low end computers and raspberry pi hardware to add extra frames in and give better gpu performance and that's coming up in the next version of ubuntu so ubuntu 2504 should have known 48 so i'll be looking out for that matt rhodes contacted me about this retro term 500 so this is for a raspberry pi 500 and a screen 3d printed enclosure the cables go into the enclosure being hidden no disassembly required of the Pi, and it only temporarily sits into the enclosure. I did ask for photos of the finished article, but they didn't get back to me. But it does look impressive. There'll be a link in the description for this one. More Ubuntu, fixing the low performance on the Raspberry Pi 5 on Ubuntu 2404. So they're talking about ranges from low performance to random unexplained crashes. Luckily, some users worked out a workaround for this issue to stop Ubuntu 2404 from running into these performance issues by simply tricking it into thinking you're using a power supply that satisfies the power current requirements of the Raspberry Pi. So it requires a change to the EEPROM, or they said you can use an older version of Ubuntu, and the instructions are here, so edit and PSU max current equals 5000. After the Pi finishes booting back into Ubuntu 2404, your performance issues will hopefully be gone. And from Tom's Hardware, this smart Raspberry Pi LED world map has global appeal. And it just it just looks really nice as a piece of art anyway. The map interacts with a smart plug that is programmed so that the map only illuminates when he's sitting at his desk. Rainbow effects, demonstrations that respond to real-time events. So daylight mode will show which parts of the world are experiencing daylight. There are also plans to add a weather mode which would indicate weather patterns through regional temperatures or events like snowfall and rain. And you can see there's some images here with all the little LEDs. And you can see the Pi there. It's a bit small to be able to identify which one it is. Not sure if they mention it. Oh yeah, Raspberry Pi 3, you could get away with using a smaller model like a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. Nice. Saw this on CNX software. PCIe X1 slot adapters let the Raspberry Pi 5 interface with standard PCIe cards. So you can see the board here that fits on the GPIO pins and uh, that's the ordinary PCIe adapter that connects to the Pi. But then it gives you a proper slot. So NVMe SSDs, network cards and AI accelerators and has a dedicated 12 volt power jack. This is a weird one from Tom's Hardware. Multiple Raspberry Pi create Wiggle RAM 3D photos using this AI enhanced camera. 
five Raspberry Pis inside this project. These are essentially photos taken using multiple cameras at the same time that can be spliced together in a GIF or video format to wiggle back and forth. Pi Zero 2Ws, Pi CM4. Oh yeah, nice. That's so what it looks cool. Oh, and that's the actual, I thought we were looking at an old school camera there. Here's the style of image that it creates. That's what I was looking for. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, really nice. Tom Termchenbauer let me know about this. So Raspberry Pi carbon removal credit. So you can buy carbon removal to help mitigate the impacts of climate change. Raspberry Pi is offering Raspberry Pi carbon removal credit to support the work of Undo, an organization whose mission is to permanently remove a billion tons of CO2 from the Earth's atmosphere. So each card produced, Raspberry Pi purchases 6.5 kilograms of high quality enhanced rock weathering carbon offsets from Undo. These offsets are generated by spreading crushed basalt on farmland, absorbing the rated quantity of carbon from the atmosphere over a period of, at most, 20 years. And if you're interested in this, there's loads more details and there's official story on the Raspberry Pi site. Check out this cyber deck. It looks really cool, really retro. It's got the wooden side on it, the nice power button here. And it's got a Raspberry Pi 5 inside it, going for an 80s design. Yeah, it just looks really impressive. I'm not sure what you use these for with such a small screen, but it's so cool. And if you're into CRT monitors, you can see now they've added interlaced video to a Raspberry Pi 5. Now, I'm not that enamored with CRT monitors. Maybe it's because years ago, I remember delivering something very similar to this. Uh, now, this was a 34-inch CRT Sony TV. I thought it was a something like a DS100 or something like that, but it was... I'm sure it was 100 kilograms in weight and two of us got stuck going up a staircase and the customer had to take the banister off uh, so we could get the TV upstairs. And I don't think I've ever recovered from that. So I'll take OLEDs or LCDs any day. But they are very useful for light gun games. And if you want to know more about it and how they've done it, all the information's in here. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.